we're going to talk about how to reduce our type 2 error. These techniques are not as easy as reducing our type 1 error. When we reduced our type 1 error, all we did was make our red rejection region smaller. So this is something that I spend a lot of time in my research methods class discussing with my students. But I do want to make sure that I give you the opportunity to think about it, how we can, as researchers, reduce our type 2 error. When we reduce our type 1 error, we just saw that it increased our type 2 error. So there's a problem there. But let's talk about what we can do to reduce our type 2 error. So looking at these pictures, this zone here is the area of a type 2 error. So we will see, let's see if we can make it purple again. All right. So this is our type 2 error. So looking at that, what can we do to make that purple zone smaller? And if you want to actually think about it yourself, pause the video here. I really encourage you to try to explore out of the box thinking about how you can make that purple zone smaller. So pause. Okay, so some of you may have thought, I know, let me move this line over. So if I take this rejection region and I move it over to the left, or I move it over to the right, right? So if I move and make this red zone bigger, it will make the purple zone smaller. Well, you're right, that would work that way. However, this is already at 5%. So that is a valid approach if you had already been at, let's say, alpha 1%, but if you're already setting your alpha at 5%, you can't make it 6%, that's not allowed. So that might have been something you thought of and, and kudos for thinking outside the box. However, we can't go, we can't make our red zones total more than 5%. So that won't work. What's something else I could do that might reduce this purple zone? Well, what I'd like to argue is that we could move the distributions in two ways. So I'm going to get rid of this purple zone. So the first way we can reduce the area, the overlap, that's really the issue here is the overlap. The first technique we can do is to increase the space between the two distributions. Let's just say we move this over. So if I take this and I move it over here, do you see how I've inherently reduced the overlap? This is all of my type two error now. That's the only overlap. Here it's a little bit bigger. Here it's ginormous, right? That's a lot of type two error. And you could see why we'd be making a type two error. Well it looks as though the blue distribution really isn't having an impact. But if it were, do you see how much of this is in the wrong zone? So if I just pick this distribution up and move it over, this is all of my type two error. Well, perfect, that's awesome. Why don't we just move distributions around? So it's not that easy to just move a distribution, right? Because it's tied to the numbers. But what are some things we could do to make this distribution go up? So one thing that people often do when they're doing research is we increase our effect size or increase the impact of our intervention. If I think vitamin DAM is gonna make you smarter and my normal dose would be 10 milligrams of drug, maybe if I give you 100 milligrams of drug, it'll really push this up and make you brilliant. Now, I understand that sounds like a silly approach because at some point it might cap out or there might be some negative side effects, but that's essentially what we're doing when we're increasing the impact is we're trying to move our distribution over. Let's say that this is a distribution and we're trying to see if uh, making you sad uh, makes you more likely to donate money. So here's how much money people donate to um, animals and shelters. And then this is when they watch a, uh, that McLaughlin commercial, right? And so if you're just a little bit sad, do you see how it hasn't really increased your likelihood to donate money? But if we make you watch like three hours of those sad puppies with the sad song over and over and over again, so each additional hour is gonna move this distribution over and over and over. And what I've done is I've increased the impact. I've made you so utterly sad that there's nothing you can do but donate more money. So what researchers might do when they are initially starting to test their products or their ideas is really do a very drastic intervention and see if they can find anything worthy of, um, of their publication. And then maybe as future iterations of the studies, they kind of take it down on maybe only two hours of Sarah McLaughlin sad videos, or maybe only a half hour, maybe only one commercial, right? And so what they have done by moving this distribution over to the right is they have reduced their type two error because that's this little chunk here. So that's one approach 
to reducing our type two error is with your methodology, make your intervention so drastic that it pushes the distribution up. Now that won't always work. So I'm gonna reset this over here. Sometimes you just can't do that. Maybe it's, uh, there's a limit on how much um, you can give people or there's just not a way to move that distribution up. Well, there's something else you can do. What else can I do? And it, right now the region kind of looks this greenish color, although it does overlap this chunk here. Later, let's make it there. So we have this green zone here. What else can I do to reduce that green zone if we're not talking about changing this zone and we're not talking about moving the distribution? What's something else I could do? So hopefully you're thinking we could make this distribution a different shape. And what I want to argue is that we can make it skinnier. Let me set the mean so I don't change the mean. So here's the mean. Now, if I want to make this distribution where the mean is in the same place, but it's just a skinnier distribution, notice I just have to move this over. how my, um, my type 2 error still reduced. So even though my mean is in the same place, by making the distribution skinnier, I've reduced this overlap and my type 2 error is smaller. That's pretty cool. So how do you make a distribution skinnier? And actually, let me just make it really dry. Let's say I make it super skinny. I just wanna make sure you're really clear. I'm making it super skinny here, but I'm setting it right at the same mean-ish. Look it, I have very tiny little type two error. Wow, all I have to do is make a distribution skinnier. And boy, if you could make it skinnier and increase the distance and move the distribution over, that would even be better. But if you wanna just make the distribution skinnier, that will also help. So let's think about what we could do to re make the distribution skinnier. So some tactics would be, so let's put this distribution on a diet. So one tactic would be more people. Now, often people think, sorry, students think if you ask more people, you're gonna get more random variability because more people means more differences. However, if this distribution is built on um, averages and deviations from averages. If I'm asking a lot of people, most of those people are gonna be around the average. So that means that the distribution is gonna be pulling upward because most people are coming here, so this distribution pulls up, which means it's gonna be pulling away from the tails. So asking more people um, will decrease your variability. And also if you think about standard deviation, how it's calculated and you're dividing by N, right? So if you increase N, you're reducing your variability. So we can ask more people. Another tactic would be ask the same kind of people. So let's say this is um, a, an intervention with intelligence and consuming vitamin DAM. Well, maybe I don't want just everybody in my sample. Perhaps I'm only going to take college graduates who are between the ages of 20 and 26 and um, got a 4.0 all throughout college and um, they don't have any children and they have two cars. Those, that's a very specific group of people. They're very, there's very little variability between people versus if I had asked everyone, you'd have all sorts of kinds of people in there um, with distractions and uh, different degree types. Whereas if we are asking the same type of person in this group that we're polling here are all the same type, you see I've reduced the inherent random error and it's just now all similar types of people that will also make your distribution skinny. And then, and by the way, I want to point out, this is very common. These techniques are very common for um, like pharmaceutical companies, right? So if they want to show that their drug works, this is why if you've ever seen a commercial and they say, have you had this kind of side effect and never had this drug, but do have this drug and have the ages between 30 and 36 and not been through these kinds of surgeries, they're being very specific so that they can reduce your variability so that they can find that their drug actually works. There's one last trick that can help make this distribution skinny, and that's ask very good questions. Oops. So let's say that, here's an example of a bad question. Let's say I'm measuring intelligence and I just say, uh, are you smart? Yes, no. Or um, what? how many smart things do you do in a week? Right. So people are gonna give you all different weird answers. I mean, what do you consider to be a smart thing to do? Versus, let's say I ask them to answer a very difficult algebra question. 
And so the variability on that algebra question, it's either right or wrong. And so I'm having much less variability around that question than if I just ask them this random thing, how many smart things do you do in a week? You're gonna get all different kinds of responses that really increase your variability. So you can see why these three tactics are really what the focus is for research methods class. I spend weeks talking about how to ask good questions. And we spend a long time talking about how to ask more people in effective ways and what types of people we should ask. But these are the very basic approaches to making this blue distribution skinny. And by making this blue distribution skinny, we've reduced that type two error. So we could either make it skinny or we can move the distribution over by increasing our effect size. And both of those tactics will reduce our type two error. Well done, you've learned about type one and type two error.